Or do you want to begin with how you got involved in all this, your initial uh, awakening in the mid-1980s? And what was going on energetically on the planet then? Um, well, I didn't realize it at the time, okay? I was 25 years old. It was 1985. And, um, <laughs> you know, my priorities were not metaphysical things. I was aware of them. But uh, it was... For me, um, I was interested in girls going surfing, riding motorcycles. I mean, yeah, I read some books, but it, it wasn't really a priority for me at all uh, up until that day, uh, which I'll obviously never forget. It was September 21st, 1985, which was an equinox. And it was just, I thought it was a spectacular equinox because they're not always like this in the sense that there was a full moon coming up that night as the sun was setting. And I literally got to sit right in between both of those celestial bodies and be bathed in the light of both. I know one is just reflective, but still, it was, it was, uh, it was quite an experience, actually. Um, and the reason I was sitting up on the mountain that night is, just, for anybody who doesn't know, I was earlier in the day when I was working security at the beach uh, where, near where I lived in Malibu, um, uh, there was a boy who had uh, cut himself very severely. He was bleeding to death. And um, I assisted, uh, and uh, paramedics showed up. Fortunately, he, he lived through that. But in the process, I ended up seeing these uh, etheric-looking parasites in the room where the event had taken place at one of the private homes there on the beach. And uh, I didn't know these people. I still really don't know who they are. Not that it matters, okay? But um, uh, uh, a lot of those beach homes are rented out. I think these particular people were just friends of the owner because um, that's how he was. He was a very friendly um, guy, and he would. I don't think he was renting his place from what I recall because I knew everybody down there. I mean, that was my job. The security, I was supposed to know who was... Um, legitimately had access to the private beach and um, so anyway yeah this boy had run face first into a sliding glass door that was closed and uh, shattered it with his face uh, and um, I, it's it still freaks me out I, when I think about it when you're you know I have to recall this memory it's <laughs> To say it was shocking, I know it was so horrific for the boy and his grandparents, and I think that's what made it so so horrible for me, um, uh, because I am empathic, which I don't think that's a special skill. I think that's what normal, healthy people, souls, uh, do, or what they have that ability, right? We all have, allegedly have that ability to connect emotionally to each other. So, right. uh, and I was pretty close when it happened. I was close enough, I mean, and um, actually felt the impact in the sense that when I was sitting there, <laughs> um, I heard this incredibly bizarre sound of, of glass, but it wasn't just glass breaking. It was almost like a, uh, a ringing bell-like sound because it was such a huge piece of glass that was being shattered from the middle like that. And um, I, it, I wrenched my head around towards the sound and that's and I actually saw the glass falling. I saw the boy clutching his face, and then I saw a shadow of a, 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 a yeah, looked like a man uh, come up from behind and, and literally sweep him up, just just you know how you pick a kid up, and just swept him up. And then the next thing I know, I found myself running towards the house. Um, so it wasn't really part of my job. I was I was mm -hmm. there to protect the. Um, enforce the private property lines and uh, uh, boundaries, whatever. So, uh, but yeah, it's like, <laughs> God, I ran into this. It was like a war zone. There was blood and glass everywhere. And the, uh, the boy's grandmother was, she was standing there completely in shock. I mean, all, all the blood was drained out of her face and she wasn't really moving. And um, so I called the paramedics and told them it was a life threatening situation and we needed you know a response immediately and um uh yeah so as i was waiting for the paramedics to show up 
um, and transport the, transport the boy out of Malibu because we there isn't there yeah there's an uh, and I've been there there's an emergency center there it's not a hospital okay this boy needed a hospital right away and typically when people are injured that badly in Malibu they either send a medevac helicopter or if they think that the person can survive they will transport them in a uh, an ambulance or a uh, uh, paramedics van but it's a it's oh, my point is there isn't it's not like it's down the street okay medical really real medical assistance you have to go a distance and so I was thinking, man, this I really didn't think he was going to make it. But um, anyway, as I was waiting for the ambulance to come, um, uh, I, uh, I started, for some reason, I felt compelled to clean up the glass. I knew the grandmother wasn't going to do it. And I, um, I just didn't want anybody else to get hurt. I, uh, and I, for some reason, we st I kind of was talking to her a little bit. And the bottom line is she, um, she told me she was glad that the, the, door was shut which completely freaked me out when she said that I, and I, I didn't even say what do you mean she just then she just said I think he was going to jump over the balcony because it was a second story thing and mm. she said he just got up and ran across the room full speed and and was and she said he I think he was going to jump over the balcony and then um, she said to me I think he thinks he can fly and at that moment I I somehow intuitively felt in my somewhere inside me that he was hearing voices telling him he could fly and at that at you know at that point in my life i'd never heard anything about schizophrenia or possession i mean okay maybe i'd heard the term but i didn't know what it meant and possession was well that was the like the exorcist right <laughs> that 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 wasn't come going through my head at that moment, but I knew something was really weird, wrong. So as I got this impression, the boy was hearing voices. That's when I suddenly saw these. Um, I, I mean, it's weird. I kind of knew they were parasites. That's the only thing that that was the only thing that came into my mind. As they, it to me, it looked like they suddenly started to just like a manifest into in the air up near the the ceiling of the room, and there had to be a, half a dozen or more of them very dark looking and like I said I, my impression was uh, they look like parasites like ticks actually and um, not exactly anyway that was my impression I looked at that for I don't know a second or two and then it sort of just faded out the way it faded in and I thought Jesus I'm <laughs> I'm hallucinating great now I'm hallucinating right because I figured the trauma and the blood you know some people pass out when they when they in the sight of blood, right? Mm -hmm. And but God, there was a lot of it. Um, well, I don't have that problem, but the, I, something was wrong, okay? Because I'd never seen anything like that before, and I just felt like um, I tried to just dismiss it. And after the ambulance came, I went back to where I had like a little security station type. How do I say it? Uh, it's where I have my gear for doing my job on the beach. I worked literally on the beach, okay? It wasn't a security shack. I, used to, I want to make this really clear to people. I had a very unusual job there. Um, but uh, anyway, they left, and um, I went back to work, and but I felt really strange. And again, I was just assuming that it was because of all the trauma. Um, and, but it was... <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, something really was wrong, and I, it was, I felt it in the, my solar plexus. And, I, and the more, it was actually getting worse, not better, as time, I just thought, well, you know, gosh, I'm just upset, man. It's going to go away, right? I just got to calm down. And, but <laughs> that, that wasn't the case. It was actually getting worse. Um, and I felt like something was draining the energy out of my body. And I started to feel like it's, it wanted to kill me, whatever it was. I didn't, know, I didn't know what was going on, okay? I, I, I want people to understand. I had no idea what was going on, and it really took me almost 30 years to figure this out in a, in a way that I feel is uh, coherent or credible, um, even though I know this is incredible. <laughs> what I'm saying is completely weird. Okay, what do you think it was about that time period? 
because I remember that time period. I remember um, the New Age movement was getting really big. Definitely not here to attack anyone. We'll get into that later in the interview. Maybe the uh, the masqueraders of the Archons come into the form of Archangels. But um, ever since I heard you first share the story years ago when I first started listening to you, I begin to hi hypothesize yep. about portals opening up um, on this planet Earth around that time period and that cycle and maybe yep. good and bad influences coming through at the same time. Um, what do you think was going on then? Uh, that's not a bad hypothesis. Um, it actually makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, again, at the time, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know about this conflict, at least. Uh, it wasn't part of my education. Okay, um, It's possible, because I do think our souls are very ancient, that I may have known that coming here. Uh, I do think that's part of the equation. But... If I did know it, I mean, if I knew it before I came here in this lifetime or previous lifetime, all that was gone, okay? Uh, I mean, it wasn't part of my awareness. Looking back on it now, after over 30 years of research, and of not only my, you know, experiences, but other people's experiences are parallel to me. Uh, yeah, portals are real, um, and, and the, there's definitely two opposing factions that are involved in uh, controlling this world or liberating this world, depending on your perspective. So, I, I mean, per personally, I think it's really a matter of healing the collective consciousness. That's the way I see it, and I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm saying. But, you know, part of the problem is that I didn't realize who had confronted me that night. When I went up on the mountain I was and I was asking for help, the being that confronted me that did look like Christ at least what most people think of as Jesus, you know, with the long hair, the beard, and the robe, and all, glowing, uh, much like is recorded in the Bible. Uh, like, just before he was crucified, he went up on a mountain and started glowing in the dark. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, whoever that guy was, he confronted me. Uh, I thought he was there to help. I didn't realize that he was there to actually try and divert me away from... Um, uh, upsetting his agenda which is the archons I mean I didn't realize he was the guy that actually created those parasites and um, the rest of the story I mean like uh, okay so anyway yeah there's a lot of these entities that are masquerading as uh, benevolent when they're not and that is a huge problem on this planet because they're in control they, they are in control as far as I know and I noticed that the um, uh, the channeling movement really has grown since that time period, or what people believe yeah. is. And I also want to ask, being that you are no longer on the West Coast and I'm no longer on the West Coast, I left Portland, my hometown, because I came to uh -huh. a state of awareness. This is just about a year before I found your interview and the term Archon. But I believe that it became infested, and I was told by someone that did a clearing on uh -huh. me, that cybernetic entities were focusing on a small business that I started there after 10 years of okay. Access TV outreach talking about the new world order. Well, also, right. I am bringing this up because I believe that the West Coast and some of those cities, and I believe that I was an activist there for that, for a reason during that period leading up until 2012. After 2012, I considered it to be a no-go zone for a, for a light soul. And then people are starting to talk wow. to me like I was a little bit. I'm like, no, 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 something's going on here. So I'm wondering, like, what? Because <laughs> obviously not just the West Coast, but the West Coast obviously seems oh, to yeah. be a um, an anchor, if you will. Uh, Portland, yeah. San Francisco, Los Angeles. And then there's Greg Braden that wrote about um, Zero Point or a, a line of energy that runs around the planet. Do you think that, or have you looked into any of this, and we'll get a little bit more into solar flares and cycles, maybe certain parts yeah. of the planet that are basically high-energy spots where they enjoy doing what it is that they do? Yes. Uh, I would say yes to all of that. I, I think your, your research, intuition, whatever you want to call it, is correct. I mean, I agree with you. There are certain areas that are hot spots where these entities are focusing more uh, on the 
doing whatever it is, their agenda, you know, the Luciferian agenda, I guess you could call it. it yeah, it's the Archon. That's just another term. You know, they're called many different things, but they're, it's, we're talking about the same group. Um, and it's pretty obvious because they all have, they always have the same method of operation. And uh, their agenda hasn't changed since they came here. And just to kind of run it by you as a summary is that I believe that um, prior to their arrival and their militant takeover of this solar system by force, um, this particular world was considered something that most people know as Lemuria. So it was more of a garden paradise up until the time that Lucifer, Enki, whatever you want to call him, when he showed up here and took over, made this part of his empire, started doing all this genetic manipulation. That was the beginning of Atlantis. And uh, I know there's a lot of rumors about what Atlantis was and how it ultimately ended, but the problem is it didn't end. Um, and uh, th that's, <laughs> that's why America is called the New Atlantis. And, um, and it's unfortunate because what that means is that this world is once again a legitimate target. It's, it's considered a threat. Um, because of all the nonsense that's going on here that can be projected beyond this world and, this so in fact, beyond this solar system. Now, with regards to uh, ancient America's theories, is, is it possible yeah. if that's where ancient Lumeria is, potentially, maybe some of these West Coast areas, or is it leaning more towards the old Atlantis? Or, um, yeah, what's your take on that? Yeah, uh, as far as I know, Atlantis was on the East Coast of the United States. Parts of the West Coast were originally part of the Lemurian Empire, okay. but both of those and both of those were global. They had some uh, centers, some major capital centers around the planet, but the planet has changed a lot since that time. Um, I mean, geographically, geologically, it's different, way different. But certain things remain. You know, it's like. There are ancient monuments of Lemuria, I believe, that um, exist in Malibu. At least that's what it looks like to me. I thought that for the longest time. I could be wrong. It may be more recent. It could, for all I know, that could be something that Enki and his crew put together, sort of self-aggrandizement. But in any case, there's been a lot of conflict on this planet. It's a really old world, much older than we have been led to believe. Um, but... In general, it was originally a paradise planet, a garden. Uh, life, as far as I know, was symbiotic. And up until the time that that all changed, thanks to the war in heavens, um, that uh, uh, Enki started Lucifer. Sorry to keep calling him both names. It's just people. Some people have never heard of Enki. They don't know who he is. So Let's go ahead and discuss uh, that. Um, so and often I, a frequently asked question, because I'm not an expert on Archons, but it's, it's obviously something that I think my soul is here to discuss. And now, I guess, yeah. evolve to the point where we're no longer afraid, because now I'm getting feedback from my audience. Some of it is a little bit fear-based, but people are starting to wake up. They're... Sure. They're less in denial. So when you said Inky, something hit a bell kind of within. Um, you know, I mean, we meet weird people yeah. and we ask ourselves, gosh, why did I meet that person? Well, I met a guy off grid here in Colorado that said he had a band that was celebrating the return of Inky. Uh -huh. And I thought, that's kind of odd. I'm, I'm like, I'm hoping this is a good thing because I am hoping to meet <laughs> people that are into the kind of this. And then I saw he was kind of getting on board the demonizing old Muslim stuff and well, we'll, we'll kind of get into maybe what's... We'll, we'll let's just kind of jump into that. Does Inky have a beef with the Iraqis? Does Inky have a beef with the Afghanis? Because you know what? Since I've been born, right, and I've learned about this New World Order thing from people in the alt media that I think have been taken by the Archons, certain personalities yeah. out there, where they used to raise yeah. questions about, hey, why are we in the Middle East? What happened on 9-11? And see, now it's like... Right let's ban them all, right? Let's judge them all. Let's yeah. racial profile. Let's, let's run around and start talking about white genocide. Ooh, we have, we have Babylonian blood over here mixing with Anglo-Saxon blood. What are we going to do? And then I'm looking at this growing since 2012. So I'm curious, what kind of an energy thing were we going into from the 80s into like the 2000s and then blasting off from 2012 
Yes, I heard all the collective consciousness, we're all going to be saved stuff from the hippie chicks, but when I look at the real world, <laughs> it's looking scarier. It's not looking like a collective shift. And I'm scared, Robert, there's yeah. going to be a genocide in the Middle East or an expansion. So how does all of this oh, yeah. fit in? Does Inky have an attitude be for the Middle Eastern people? Does this go back to the ancient creation of mankind? Uh, okay, you're asking a lot of questions. I'll put it to you this way. Enki um, uses divide and conquer to keep us under his control. We are subject, as we're all subjects of his empire. Most people have no idea of that. Um, and they wouldn't even know him at, at that name. They would just call him Lucifer. It's the same entity. Um, in the Middle East, the Luciferian doctrine has been known for thousands of years and um, it was the counterpoint to that was uh, Christianity claiming that Yahweh was the one God and that Lucifer was evil and I, I don't I think that was also coming from him to tell you the truth it's like he needed to set up just like you were talking about these uh, it's like perpetual war economy that's been going on forever uh, I mean, as, as long as he's been here, at least the last couple hundred thousand years, um, his empire is set up like that. The the reason that he um, uh, he he feels that he needs to divide us up is so that we can never be strong enough to confront him or kick him out. And so this is this is one of the reasons he's constantly doing this this number on us. From I mean, he's the one, in my opinion. He created all the religions, not just to worship him, but to get us to uh, attack one another. So it's like a double-edged deal. Look, it, it keeps us very militant. Uh, we're producing a lot of energy that they can feed off of. I mean, he is, Lucifer, and he, he is the father of the Archons. Okay, and so... He's uh, also the father of all lies. Understood. So we're talking about, you know, a feeding frenzy of negative energy, pain, suffering, blood ritual, sacrifice. Right. It, it may right. not be necessarily super overtly preferences for one particular expression of human or another because right. we also see periods in which uh, white people are sacrificed, uh, in which... Um, yeah, he doesn't care. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all subjects of his empire. He can do whatever. I mean, he considers himself the father of man. Because he created us in a laboratory, but the truth is he didn't create our DNA, his mother did. And he's just manipulating it. He's lost his ability to create as a god using his purely using his soul energy or consciousness. Uh, that allegedly happened some time ago before he came to this world. He went insane and he suffers from multiple personality disorders. And he's, that's when he and his crew inadvertently created those mental parasites. They are thought forms. Actually, we're all thought forms in that regard. But those, that was completely unintentional on their part. And they, end up, they ended up um, becoming, well, they went from being builders of worlds to destroyers of worlds. And that's, that's where the conflict is. At this point, you know, it's, it's not so much a war as it is, is a very difficult situation as far as healing uh, a person's consciousness. Like, for example, not a great example, but um, a person who's a drug addict. You can offer them assistance. You can try and talk sense to them and say, you know, your life would be better if you start shooting heroin. Um, and, I'll, you know, I'll help. there's a lot of different help ways that we can help you. But unless that person chooses to get well, it isn't going to happen. You can try all you want, but it's their choice. And that's a really big part of all of this is free will is at play. So um, it's one of the reasons that the Luciferians or the Archons, they're really good at um, uh, tricking us into agreeing to things that are actually very harmful to ourselves. They, they presented, I mean, obviously the metaphor is the, the situation with Eve eating the apple and knowing good from good and evil the knowledge of good and evil, right? But it was actually Lucifer, Enki, that, that gave her that. Metaphorically, he was the one that gave us the ability to know evil, because that's what he is. But I define evil as, a, as a, an infection of one's consciousness, uh, a breakdown. It's, it's, it's a form of insanity. 
And it's not our natural state at all. It's not a healthy state of being, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. And it seems that some of the people that are that are in the media now and, and politics are trying to accentuate that infection. You know, seeing the uh, the of post they are. right. Because they're rewarded for it. I mean, look, this is the thing. He's in charge here. It's his empire. And if you do something that's going to benefit his agenda, you are rewarded. So you'll keep doing it. And this is why so many people have been compromised. You know, uh, uh, here's the thing. In my second book about uh, UFOs in Washington, D.C., it's called Covert Encounters in Washington, D.C. And it's all about uh, the... <laughs> how prevalent UFO and extraterrestrial activity is in the nation's capital. Um, and here's the bottom line. That when people go there, even if they have the best of intentions, after they've been inside the magic circle, also known as the beltway, after they've been there a while, their behavior changes, and they become compromised. And so whatever they thought they were going to do to affect change, um, they are changed. They are altered. And this is called Potomac Fever. It's also known as Beltway Fever. Uh, at one month into the Trump administration, the news was reporting that Donald J. Trump had cabin fever, and he was suffering headaches and anxiety. I would argue that that is um, incorrect, that he was suffering from, like everybody else that goes there, from what I just described to you. It's called Potomac Fever. I know a lot of people like to dismiss it and say, oh, that's just urban legend. Well, they're wrong. And it's only because they haven't done their homework. I, I wasn't even sure why I was being dragged into that investigation by myself. Um, very little support from anybody on that. And I did it for years because I was convinced something huge was going on there, and it wasn't kosher. And um, it took me a while to figure it out. But um, I guess I really needed to understand that the microcosm of the bigger problem that is affecting everybody. Absolutely. I really noticed around 2013 and 14 something really shifting on the internet. And uh, I would even say yeah. since I got involved in 2005 in this alternative media thing, fans becoming yeah. dedicated haters and trolls simply because of a refusal, <laughs> you know, I guess, to get in line. And then I did a series calling out somebody else in alternative media who's the biggest of the biggest as the ultimate uh -huh. Argo, Archon mine hijack, Archon. crossing Archon yeah. terminology over into an arena that normally doesn't encompass that. And um, the attacks came, and now, because we're going to talk about also, how do you deal with blowback once you start exposing this stuff? Because now with the internet, the power for, um, I don't use the word gang stalking so much, but uh, targeting people being targeted yeah. by groups of people that are angry on the internet because they're not getting behind a bottom line. And I also be, began to wonder, was there some sort of a spell that was cast over the internet because yeah. there were people that were like adamantly anti-establishment, right? You cannot believe the media any way, shape, or form. And I'm like, okay, well, don't yeah. you think that they're trying to pretend to be against Trump? Don't you think that this is a little bit reverse psychology? Right. Because here I'm thinking there's yeah. got to be some basic intu intuition. Then I saw the New Age channeling chicks and dudes for Trump. And then I saw more of an archon <laughs> penetration of consciousness. So I guess let's yeah. also go back and include the false masqueraders of Archangel Michael, oh, God. Jesus, and others, and how... With Sananda, certain, yeah, Sananda, et cetera. Right, with yeah, certain websites, they were saying that the Galactic Federation <laughs> of Light had endorsed Putin and Trump about a year ago. Of course. And then I saw how those uh, memes were directing hundreds of thousands to maybe millions. Now, what do you think is going yeah, on with course. all of this? Because I know that okay. you have fans of, of some people that are almost in that oh. world. And you're trying to help them. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't, look, I'm not asking for fans. I, I know there's people that, right. that contact me, but I'm, I'd really, I'm very careful about the way I present myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I'm not a messiah, I'm just a messenger, I don't need fans. Uh, or followers, for God's sake. Right, right, bad uh, word. <laughs> social, social, yeah, social media has become what it was intended to be, which is anti-social media, 
It's another way of dividing everybody up on a digital level, which is an extension of what the Archons do to us on a spiritual level. Uh, same, same goes with all the other crap that they pull on us, you know, I mean, the vaccines, etc. It's just, it's a way of uh, distorting or polluting or, uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's, a, it's like I said, it's an illness and it wants to perpetuate itself. Um, you'd asked me something else that was really important. So between 87 and 2012, mm -hmm. the energy was shifting on the planet dramatically, uh, I think for the better. Although you, you might have a hard time believing that if you look at the news, but the news has always been skewed toward the dark side. Um, I lived through that period. Some of us were early adopters, pioneers in that. 85 was people like Streeper and myself. We uh, were having really profound break through kind of experiences that we didn't even understand, um, let alone, you know, <laughs> how could anybody else understand something that you don't even understand, right? Especially that early on. Um, but yeah, things shifted dramatically in that period. After everybody who went through that, most everybody I should say, everybody who survived that um, was a more better prepared for the next level of energy shift after 2012. And that's, and I mean, for, for benevolent reasons, that's part of the healing process, as far as I know. But that's also the reason that the, the entities, the archons, on the dark side of the equation, that is why they're acting more in, and more increasingly desperate and transparent, because they feel like they're losing control. And they can't lose control. They don't have any plan B. And without us, they're screwed. They don't have a food source, and um, and they can't, they can't perpetuate themselves I just want to add to this part and, and bring in the solar cycles yeah. in just a moment so uh, um, yeah. I was living in rural Aurora Oregon in 1984 5 I was born 80 so I also turned 20 in oh. 2000 so my dates are lined up in some odd way with the planets but I just yeah, yeah. we were in our own garden of Eden my mother and I my single um, mother and I in Aurora Oregon by 1987 um, and that was during a period where an old boyfriend of hers was was spending time in prison and he was very much involved in the um, the loan sharking criminal underworld of the 1970s and 1980s um, as a uh, yeah. A Japanese martial artist guy living in Portland who literally lived that type of uh, Scarface type of reality. There was something about that period that I always remembered being distinct, like something shifted. And uh, as an adult looking back, my intuition shows me or tells me something intervened in that man's life to put him away to keep him from getting killed. Does it mean he was no longer yeah. a bouncer or a violent person afterwards? It was that he was no longer in as deep. And then if we look at movies like Wise Guy and other things, it seems like there was a lot of, like, a calling within America. A lot of dudes killed each other around that time period. Yeah. And then it seems like from 1987, well, I guess we all know the rest of the story, if we can feel the energy shifting. Um, I, I struggled with a heroin addiction from 99 to 2004. Um, it was around the time of 9-11. And so my physical body, being of Anglo and Middle Eastern descent, I became aware that my sensitivities were abnormally jacked up. And I was coping with those abnormal sensitivities through that addiction that, ironically, in Portland, heroin was everywhere in 99. I mean, uh, it, it, I know. Yeah. I, I, I know that. So when I discovered the yeah. solar yeah. cycles was 2008. And then I became aware of the war cycles. And then I became aware of drug cycles, which I've never seen anybody write about. So I discovered within my own life, looking at what you're discussing in this era, there was some sort of an energy that was so strong that especially came in after the 90s um, that brought a lot of things out into the light. And some of us reacted to that in a negative way, but it didn't necessarily mean that we were sure. negative. It meant that we were like waking up to something. And I know that other people in the late 90s were going through the same stuff. So... Um, yeah. Throwing this back in your corner, now looking at the solar, do you see the solar cycles as being very influential uh, with regards to these shifts yeah. in energy? Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, the sun is connected uh, to all of the rest of creation, just like we all are. So that is what's causing these shifts in the energy of the sun. It is a bubble. It's called a heliosphere. It's not just like 
a little flat disc, right? I want people to understand this. Where we live, we live inside a bubble. It's a big-ass bubble, I mean, compared to the Earth, but it's actually very small compared to the rest of the universe. But the point is, we live in a bubble of energy that's coming out of the sun, but the sun is getting, it's connected to all of these other sources, and that's what's driving it. Um, it's not just a nuclear reactor. Um, the other thing is that our entire solar system, the heliosphere, it entered, it is fully inside a large cloud of um, highly charged particles. Metaphysically, people call it the photon zone, the photon band. NASA calls it the fluff. I'm still not sure why they called it that or prefer to call it that, but they, what baffles them is that these particles in this cloud of charged particles is so hot, everything should be burning up, but it's not. It's really a conundrum. They don't understand it. They don't talk about it much. They were so panicked uh, for a long time. They were freaking out, thinking they had to do all these weird contingency planning. I, in fact, I think a lot of the underground cities were just for that. For that, They really thought the whole planet was going to just ignite on the surface because of this. And there's no way to stop it, obviously. Um, but we're obviously surviving, and that's why the climates of all the planets have changed fairly recently it's it's not global warming it's the whole solar system is inside this uh cloud of of energy okay so could it be accurate to say that this uh, electromagnetic energy that's natural comes from the sun these these particles this solar rain the solar plasma totally natural even though yep. we're told to be afraid of it totally natural and it may really be something that could be boosting this arconic influence Potentially, as well as the sun being something that's totally natural and beautiful. Well, yeah, but it's not just the sun. They, they call these cosmic rays, and they do come from all over. There's no way to stop those either. I mean, yeah, the heliosphere protects us to some extent. The magnetosphere of the Earth protects us to some extent. But things like neutrinos are passing through us right now, billions of them, okay, all the time, all the freaking time. You can't stop that either. So the thing about it is that all of this is um, energy, matter, and consciousness are all the same thing. They're waveforms, and they're being, they're being generated by souls, as far as I know. That's the model that I prefer to embrace, and it makes more sense to me than anything else. So uh, a god or a divine godly being will have the ability to send out thought forms or waves that... Um, that manifest in ways that we would consider to be energy or matter. So this entire universe that we see is the, the creation of one soul. Right. And in that regard, the reason I'm bringing this up, look, we're all related. See, this is the really screwed up part about this nonsense about fighting uh, so-called different races. There's only mm -hmm. one race. Or religion or finance, whatever. Um uh, the, the truth is that we're all related, we're all family, and nothing's going to change that. But if somebody wants to believe that their neighbor is different than them somehow, then then we've got a problem. We've got a big, big problem, and it's it, it, again, it's an infection of one's consciousness. When you when we start believing that um, in the lies that the archons are are propagating. Uh, yeah, we come, we fall under the spell. We agree to do harm to ourselves and others, and they need that. This is the whole thing that goes back to the boy. I didn't understand why that would happen. Why would any entity, especially one that looked like Christ, why would he want that boy to uh, almost bleed to death in front of his grandparents? And it, it, th this is where the Gnostic text, even though I don't agree with all of it, especially the Nag Hammadi, so-called library. It's a, that's just a fraction of what remains. To, I mean, there was uh, the Gnostics had a lot of information. A lot of it was brought from Egypt mm -hmm. um, or carried over from ancient texts in Egypt. But the bottom line is that what we have now is very, very, very small amount because it was destroyed. They were destroyed. The, no, the Gnostics were destroyed. Um, but it says that these archons are here, that they're imitators. They can't create anything. And um, they describe them as reptilian, allegedly, and also as looking like a fetus, 
and uh, actually, you know, when you if you look at the article I wrote um, on my website in the article section, uh, Meet the Archons, there's a picture of a human fetus that really does look like these entities in the sense that um, they're very, they actually look more like amoeba to me. They look a lot like an amoeba, which technically is a parasite. I mean, that's when I looked it up. I was surprised. I thought, wow, I, I didn't realize that. I thought amoeba were something else, but okay. I mean, uh, apparently there's a lot of different parasites in in this world. I'm not sure they were originally here, but they're here now. And um, what my understanding is, again, what the my interpretation of what the Gnostics were telling us, and they're not the only ones that knew of these entities, but uh, they do draw energy parasitically from us when we harm ourselves or others mm -hmm. through our DNA. See, our DNA is emitting light all the time, but when we're healthy, it's a it's a healthy light. I mean, actually, it's uh, sorry, DNA receives and emits light. Our bodies are doing that all the time on a very low level. Um, but when we hurt ourselves, there's a completely different. It's, it shifts the frequency of the light, the spectrum of it, okay? So it's it's a completely different thing, and that's what they feed off of. Very interesting, because that that's actually where the solar stuff for me came from, was the self-awareness that oh. I emit more emotion and light, in some cases more than the average human being, during solar flares and solar cycles. Um, and oh, okay. it seems like that's why, during those periods, I had my own experiences. I would also notice that drive-by shootings, as, as I become older, I'm going to start documenting this, just like people that came before us. You know, 100 years ago, a Russian documented the solar cycles and the battles in Russia to the solar flares. And that's where I'm starting to wonder if that's something that we can see maybe as a warning sign, not to be afraid of the sun, but to realize that's a period because we emit more energy and light and maybe DNA information. But that's a period in oh, which I they see. try to reroute, right? Try to reroute maybe our focus and maybe create these uh, fake revolutions, you know, and fake protests <laughs> so we don't go into our true light. Yeah, I get you. I see what you're saying now that we become more uh, attractive to them as our energy, our light goes well, up. Well, especially in. Pound us harder. Especially in certain cities. And so, certain things that I'm discussing, I'm really summarizing because I spoke for hours before. And I really just want to get some of your thoughts on some of this because I notice in some of the interviews, people ask you really basic, basic entry level stuff. And I think now we're starting to get a little bit more advanced with this. For example, yeah. Eve Lorgan's The Love Bite. When I came across her work, and, and then I understood, now I understand why I'm obsessed with that woman. Now I understand okay. why, um, you, you know, uh, you talked about the flying dream with the woman. I've had the same experiences, but some of them were spiritual, but almost seemed parasitic. Like, gee, we seem to have a spiritual astral connection. It seems that maybe yeah. we're meant to focus on each other. And then I realized that for some reason when the solar cycle started in 2009 and 10 and I became infatuated with a particular woman, I later figured out what an energy vampire was and that there was something about my light in 09 and 10 when I was reaching a lot of people in Portland. It was something redirected me through my primal instincts. And it took me leaving Portland and uh, decording with the region that I was born in that was going through energy bombardment during the solar cycle 24 to move off the ley line off Green in Colorado where those energies weren't so concentrated where there weren't so many humans transmitting receiving arconic consciousness and so it was from that perspective yeah. in Costia County Colorado that I began to have a different perspective on the whole thing and basically see value in living like a monk for a little bit, not having so much. So I think that's that's also why I'm off the grid now. I'm trying to make sense out of certain things, and I think that men in particular can get really trapped to this archonic world if they don't realize that if they leave their lust unchecked, they could be totally rerouted into an archon world and chasing temporary oh, yeah. things. And so I, I feel like I'm having this learning curve, I guess, or soul learning curve on how the archons can control us, men and women, through sexuality. Yeah. And how sexuality Absolutely. itself is so um, transitory, changing, 
um, uh, in a state of morphine. Mean, yeah. It's it's also yeah it's been militarized just like immigration has been militarized and so many other things. And the reason that this is being done to us is as you obviously can see it helps them control us, but it's also um, hurting us in a direction that serves their agenda, which is they need us to be agitated so that they can feed, but they also want to keep us at a level of uh, militant uh, society so that we'll accept, um, in other words, there has to be a rationalization for every new weapon system that we create to use on our alleged enemies or perceived enemies, because all that is is preparation for us to ultimately leave this planet or being permitted to leave under false pretenses to ultimately go out there and do exactly what Enki wants us to do just like under Atlantis. And that's why this planet was wiped out um, at some point, because we were incredibly dangerous to other planets. And um, and it's not because we're barbaric or primitive. It's because we're being managed to go in that direction. I mean, this is the whole thing about people talk about this a lot, and a lot of it is complete nonsense, if you ask me. But buzzwords like uh, secret space program and super soldiers okay that that's it's very uh chic right now to talk about it but it's it's really sinister and it all goes back to enki um and his agenda so the nazis or the german secret societies got sucked into that steiner was a big proponent of lucifer um uh and and others got caught up in including Hitler. He got caught up in that whole thing about serving Lucifer and it's going to benefit them somehow. And obviously that didn't work out too well, but they were granted a lot of technology that became part of our infrastructure. And that includes genetics. Obviously eugenics is something that Nazis were doing, but actually it started in America. So as I told you, America is, according to Sir Francis Bacon, uh, America's the new Atlantis meaning it was being rebuilt, mm -hmm. yeah, reestablished. It's not a good thing because it was, it was never, Atlantis was never a good thing. It was very militant. Uh, they were doing a lot of genetic uh, manipulation. It's, it wasn't even experiments. These, this is, you know, we talk about super soldiers. That, that was common during the days of Atlantis, and it's far more common now than people realize, but it's not... <sighs> Most of the people that discuss this have no idea why it's going on. They just call it breakaway civilization as bullshit. It's, it's the same old story recycled over and over and over again for the same reason. This conflict is not over. And, you know, the funny thing is, or I should say it's ironic, the Luciferians are the ones that are doing all the fighting. They're doing all the destruction. The benevolent ones, the divine beings, uh, they don't work like that. My understanding is they just do not. What would be the point? If you're on that level of being, uh, you're not going to just go around destroying things. You find another way to deal with it. So this is one of the reasons why they're increasing the energy gradually here to help us uh, heal our consciousness. And it's not an easy task, obviously. And I think there is a, there has to be a limit to this. Otherwise, everything just falls apart. Right. Um, uh, I probably have hundreds of stories of divine intervention or protection. <laughs> at, pro probably like dozens that I know of, but then there's the others that I don't. Yeah. So without sounding super yeah. religious, it could be hypothesized that behind the scenes, the aeons are watching some of us with priority, possibly, if we're playing a major critical role. Uh, yeah, obviously. It's, uh, I, the way I describe it, it's a nine-dimensional chess game, even though this isn't a game, but that's just the analogy, because chess is really mock combat. I, I mean, it's what it's based on. It's warfare, but it, nobody's getting killed. It's just little pieces on the board. It's simulated. But everything about the universe that we're in right now is a simulation. It's not organic. It's totally synthetic. It's administrated by AI that is relatively ancient, at least the way we measure time, which is, again, quite an illusion. Um, so it, it's like, here's the problem. We have, a lot of us have been stuck here, imprisoned in, not only on this planet, but within Enki's little uh, synthetic universe 
for a relatively long time, and we are uh, suffering from the illusion. It's so when somebody starts discussing possible alternatives or truths or revel you know revelations or realizations insights whatever it it doesn't it it makes them feel very uncomfortable even though they might recognize it on some level it's like um it feels threatening to them i guess the the buzzword now is triggered this is this is what they're saying you know for people that just can't tolerate anybody else's opinion if they don't agree with it <laughs> they, they've been triggered right uh right so they got to go find a safe place to I don't know what they think they're going to do there, but um, the the future for humanity has already been written. We labor under the illusion here that we have free will. The thing is, the Luciferians know that we do have free will, and that is why they constantly trick us into agreeing to their agenda under false pretenses. So right now what they're doing is they're trying to sell people on the idea of merging with machines. Um, it was actually, I was surprised that this is even in Arthur C. Clarke's the final of the final book of the trilogy of 2001 Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. He actually talks about the, the entities that came here and were manipulating life here had merged with their machines at some point and gone into space and then advanced beyond that until they were just energy beings. This is what he said. In, now, I mean, can't prove it, but I think it's fascinating that he was having these kinds of um, glimpses, uh, the possibilities of what we're really dealing with here. Because I know that, look, we're all multidimensional beings, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if some race, let's say like the Luciferians, had gone into merging with the machines that they created to assist them uh, and then ultimately moving beyond that. Doesn't mean that the machines are gone, though. Not by a long shot. The, the machines are still there. It's just an extension of them. Well, um, and yes, they are intelligent. Going back to uh, Alex Jones, for example, he changed the last few years, and he's screaming about wanting to merge with <laughs> machines. And not everybody understands yeah, the Archons that criticizes Alex, but for those that do understand the Archons and what you just said, now an hour yeah. compilation can be edited of Alex screaming to the elite, give me your technology because I served you. He literally is saying it out in the open. Um, so there's some videos oh where he's God. criticizing transhumanism and there's others where he literally almost becomes possessed. And um, yes. the show yeah, isn't about him, but the... Right, I'm starting to see the role that he's yeah. playing for Inky or Lucifer or the Archons. Um, the power it's, of... You know, it's really tough. Alex, it's really hard, okay? I, I'm not excusing his behavior, but here's the problem. On this world, power corrupts, and our absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the reason that formula works is because this is his empire. This is his world. We play by his rules. So anybody that wants to rise up through the ranks, whether they know it or not initially, they become a pawn of the Archon. Yeah, it's understood. It's really hard. This is, one of the reasons, this is one of the reasons I don't do a show anymore. Uh, and that I... You know, I'm, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm hesitant to even give interviews, but, you know, I understand why people are asking me these questions because I have a unique perspective on it. Maybe it's helping. I kind of think it is based on the email I get from people all over the planet. I mean, not everybody. I mean, from different parts. Like I was speaking to this lady in Greece yesterday. I get emails from people literally all from countries all over that speak English. So they're, they're very, and increasingly so, people are very curious they feel that um, my particular take on this makes sense to them for some reason, but I gotta I gotta preface the rest of what we're discussing here is most of what people discuss in this arena is speculation, but it's presented as fact, just like scientists. Most of the crap that they say is is you know law of this or whatever. It's still theory, but it's presented as fact and it's unquestionable. It from their perspective because they have so much invested in it. I don't personally. Look, I, the only reason I'm doing this is because I needed to figure out what the hell was happening to me and why. Who's doing this, okay? Right. Do they have the right to do it? Well, absolutely not. How, well, okay, then how do I stop them? How do I stop them? But then I realized, whoa, wait a second. It's not about me. We're all screwed up in this deal. It's it's like it's a whole dysfunctional family feud going on here. And um, But I don't have some delusions of grandeur like, oh, you know, I'm going to fix it. It's not 
you know, it's not up to me. We are, we're all individuals within a collective, so it's, it's a personal choice. That's the most important thing that, that I want to emphasize to your audience is that uh, it's one of the reasons I don't, I'm not political, religious, philosophical. I don't, I don't buy into any of that stuff. I don't participate on it. I'm aware of all that crap, but I know it's a trick. I know it's a trap. So, I, you know, the only thing I can offer, really, other than, you know, my years, decades of research into this field, mm-hmm. uh, and the few conclusions I've been able to draw from it, hopefully lending some clarity to a very convoluted situation, uh, is, is there's, there's some things that we can do. You know, instead of just sitting around waiting for somebody to solve the damn problem, uh, things that we can do, very simple. And I know this sounds overly simple, okay, but don't laugh. Uh, being calm in the midst of a crisis is very important. It sets up a different resonance field if you could do it it's hard okay it's not that it's not no you're not just going to sit there and close your eyes i'm talking about really staying emotionally staying centered and calm when everything else is going to shit that's that's really hard to do being kind especially when other people are being cruel very difficult to do very very and i'm not saying turn the other cheek if you have to you sometimes you have to defend yourself or others but i'm saying uh, maintaining a good kind emotional state in the midst of, of cruelty is really important. A lot of people are losing that. Third thing is being creative. I don't care if you just draw doodles. It, that, that, that is actually very it's an essential part of who we are. Because mm-hmm. we are defined in the sense that, look, we were created by a creator to be creative. When we, when we deny that part of ourselves, it atrophies. And we're, right now, we're in a very immature state. But we have the ability. We do have the potential just like a seed comes off a tree, right? Like, you know, at, at some point, if it if it finds the right soil, nutrients, it's going to become a tree itself, right? Well, that's what I see us as, okay? And that's just what our, cre- our level of creativity now is completely distorted. It's all screwed up. But we, we have the potential to, to literally be divine, godly creators as well, uh, right? We were created in the image of, what, what does that mean, right? God's an artist. Why aren't you? Um Okay, so um, the fourth thing that I feel, and I, this is kind of new, but I think it's most important, is being connected. Because I see us as seeds of light. We are all, our souls, actually, to me, I've got a picture of a, a graphic I created up on my website. It's at the bottom of most every page. Uh, Castaneda has called it an, a luminous egg. He borrowed that phrase. But anyway, I see us as seeds of light in a garden. Uh, that it, it all the all the life in the garden is connected through a web of light. So I, I'm pretty sure this is what scientists are hinting at when they say entanglement, but it's really not. I mean, it, that's a terrible term, but that's what they call it. Uh, the reason I'm mentioning it is because just like the internet, look, a computer is is pretty. Yeah, so it can do some stuff, but when you connect it to the internet, wow! Now you've got millions and billions of computers connected to each other, and then to share consciousness, etc. So I communicate, and that's the difference. See, most of us are not connected to the real cosmos or the, the universe or the omniverse, multiverse, whatever you want to call it. I, don't, I really don't think there's only one. I think there's an infinite number of universes. There's, you know, that's just the way it is to me. Um, we only live in one, but it's connected to all the others. So, but our problem here is we're living inside this fake universe that uh, Lucifer, Inky, created, and, and we're, it's very difficult to connect to the actual the real thing uh, when we're stuck here. And they don't want us to do that, by the way. They've got firewalls up all over the place. So how you do that is very, very much a personal thing. Okay, There's a lot of different avenues that you can reconnect to the cosmos. First, you have to know that you're disconnected, and then you have to make a choice. It's like, okay, uh, who's going to be my service provider? How am I going to get there? If you want to use religion, fine, I don't. But, I mean, there's... Um, wow, how would I say this? There isn't one path, mm-hmm. but they all lead to the same place. It's There's many paths, and they all lead to the same place. That's, I guess that's a better way to say it. Um, yeah. So well, we can we can talk a little bit really? about maybe some do's and don'ts regarding uh, dealing with <laughs> Archon Attack. Here, let me give you a small example. So I said I came to live off the grid to get away from Archonic influence. Well, since yeah. I started yeah. discussing the Archons more in my uh, YouTube channel, I always seem to get energy blowback within 24 to 72 hours. And I'm trying yeah. to track it to see whether it's getting stronger or weaker. I would say weaker. 
It's getting weaker by the year, but every year something gets thrown at me, including some attempted physical assaults. Last one was last year. Uh, I defended myself against a guy attacking my camera. A cop that didn't like me uh, because I exposed some criminal misconduct in another county um, decided that the yeah. video showing me defending myself showed me as the aggressor in his archonic mindset. <laughs> so a warrant has actually right. been issued under my name now for New Mexico. So at some point, I have to deal with past Arconic attacks on my person. This occurred one right. month before finally getting my land, ending four years of homelessness. The homelessness wow. followed 10 years of being an Access TV host, having David Icke on, having Alex Jones on as guests. And then all of a sudden, in people's wow. minds in Portland, I became in their eyes... You know, maybe someone that was into either black magic or drugs or, you know, being half Middle wow. Eastern, maybe I'd be on the list. Being an Ansari with the last name, that does go back thousands of years for anyone that Googles it. Uh, and it's relation uh -huh. to Islam, but I'm a non-Muslim. Why was my soul thrown in this body? So, again, for 37 years, I've been questioning everything. Why do we get thrown into certain genetics? Why are they engineering this us versus them and then putting the conspiracy theorists over here? And, and they're now saying the conspiracy theorists are all with Trump to scare the leftists, which isn't fair, Robert. It's not fair. No, so, of not. so let's get not back to the neighbor this. and tell you what happened. So yeah. he's an alcoholic, and he invited me over for beers, and he and his friend were joking about raping and eating Iranians. And so that pretty much what? crystallized to me that if you have an alcoholic right, who's playing host, yeah. and you happen to be a light yeah. worker who's reaching the world if something wants to hurt you, there's something about alcohol, drugs, and fire that can almost result in that unconscious person being taken over and maybe not becoming violent, but saying things that are outrageously, like right up there with emotional terrorism. And they may not even right, know what they're... Exactly. So I decided that I would distance myself from him, realizing that he is a full-blown... He's just like a crazy guy in the streets, in the city screaming to himself, right. but he's out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, right. now what they're doing is they're revving up their vehicles, they drive by my property, and screaming, die, MF or die. This is right outside the cabin wow. that I'm doing the podcast to you now. So my, my reaction is not to play tough guy, even though I am a martial artist and I have a heavy bag outside. That's a spiritual practice for me, yeah. which I think you have some thoughts about probably as well. So I'm not a violent guy. I'm expressing my chakras. I'm getting my energy flowing. I'm walking outside barefoot. I'm sun gazing. And I'm feeling this energy coming at me from the neighbors that's saying, you came here to be safe from race attacks and whatnot, you're less safe here than anywhere, is what they're trying to send from the neighbor's residence. And I'm able now, sensitive right. enough to pick up on that. Now, as I realize that I moved to a place where I'm abnormally sensitive, I have to now be responsible and tune that to the mind of God or my angels, not Inky, who's blasting me. So going back to the story, they're driving by, and this is the cherry to the Sunday, which you've also experienced. They scream that die, MF or die, when I was in the in-between state between waking and sleeping. Meaning, wow. something else is observing me on a level right. and using right. the neighbor as a host. So what I'm doing is, I'm just pretending he's not there. I'm not going to go on this route and get super armed because I'm not armed, by the way. Because I've walked this long without a gun. And most Americans think I'm nuts for having that much faith in the creator. <laughs> An agent could inhabit any so-called human in the matrix right and attack this uh what was i guess we could call them the rebels neo and his group um, um morpheus those guys were always being attacked by the agents and and they could they could in, uh, possess the body of anyone at any time that they choose because they were monitoring they were just extensions of the matrix obviously but yeah i get what you're saying um if i was in your shoes <laughs> um, yeah, it, I, it, I actually have been there. You know what? It feels um, like that, that movie Little Buddha with Keanu Reeves. So Maya comes and he tempts him with lust. <laughs> and we talked about that earlier, yeah. being tempted with lust. And yeah. then and then Maya comes yeah. and he does a little threatening. Well, you better stop your journey towards enlightenment. Otherwise, there might right. be some sort of a smackdown. And then Maya also comes with the praise. And sometimes I get really bizarre, yeah. overwhelming praise from some fanatics that will also turn into trolls on me a month later if they see a right. video they don't like. They'll go from fanatics to outrageous praise to attack. So I stay away from super praise, yeah. folks, too. 
because that extreme energy can can flip so from praise there's lust and fear maya comes with it seems maya the demiurge yeah, well, inky right the buddha siddhartha what he said was the balance you must be in balance the, but here's the catch balance is always found between two extremes how do you stay centered when others around you have none it's not going to be found on tv or the internet okay okay because it's a choice it's you it's your soul the center of your soul is still and if you can see that light if you can be that light here and now they're not going to touch you something will happen and they will absolutely freak out i've seen it happen before <laughs> see because if they if you what i've done and i've made this mistake if we take any kind of uh, what they perceive as hostile action towards them then that gives them le they think legitimacy to attack you on any and every level it's happened to me it's happened to me more than one. I'm, look i'm not very smart when, and I, I mean, let's put it this way. I'm not stupid, but sometimes I'm, sometimes I'm very slow to get things, even if it's very obvious. Um, and that's why, you know, I've suffered like everybody else here on some level. I'm at, you know, but I survived it. I am a survivor, mm -hmm. as most of us are. Okay, those of us who consider themselves to be victims are choosing to be unempowered. And they often want to, in fact, always want to blame others people that are survivors are empowered they self-empower they want to empower others it's the complete opposite just being a survivor alex doesn't mean you need to attack even if you're being attacked okay it's it's like it's like pouring gasoline on a fire that's what they want that's exactly what they want and that's why i mentioned to you earlier the, the four things that i mentioned actually is like the water that you pour on on their fire because you're, this is your choice. You're doing it internally. So they're trying to burn you. They're trying to literally burn you up. It's like, you know, when somebody's really pissed off, they got fire shooting out their ears and stuff. They're so hot under the collar. But these, if you, even if you can only do one of them, it's better if you can do all four. But I mean, look, this takes effort because we've been so programmed to be pissed off all the time and confused and distracted, etc. cetera. Um, whatever you can do, of those four things if you can do all, all four even better but the more you do practice those things calm kind creative connected um though that it, it insulates you it it has a, a very positive infectious uh affect on people around you that are, are seeking you know that obviously people that are completely infected are not going to be they're not going to come to your side or that level but they will it, but it makes them very uncomfortable, and they, they just don't want to be around it. They, see, that's the thing about these things, that they're very cowardly. Not only do they have to hide from us, because they know that if, once we figure out that they're he, they really are here and what they're doing to us, they know for a fact that we will unite against them. Or even individually, we'll take action against them. Okay. okay? I, I just want so, to add that on the creative, scared of us. On the creative part, all that escalated once yep. my friend visited and painted beautiful trees on the 10 by 12 cabin. So I'm noticing, and, and then there's there's some spiritual stuff saying, thank you, Father, give us our daily bread or something. Ever since the spiritual yeah. text literally went on the cabin that I'm sitting in, then it started. Yeah. So um, you're basically wow. validating what I thought, and this is probably helping other yeah. people that we need to just pretty much maintain the course not let us box us into reacting violent behavior and, and, and things of that nature. It's basically what they feed on. It's what they depend on. Yep. And they really want to distract us yep. from our path. If we, we might really be ascending on some level because I've literally one more story and then we'll go to the next one time I was meditating right. in Portland right. and a homeless guy all of a sudden became possessed by agent Smith and started smirking at me and yelling all these things because the sunlight was connecting with my aura. And at that time, I was home free, living in my vehicle, but I was still doing podcasts and holding the frequency. So this is just validating more and more that whatever path I'm on, they really want to throw me out of it and, and get me into some sort of fight or flight mode. It seems that they're trying to do this to everyone because 
Um, let's move. Oh, yeah. Let's move to something else real quick. They're really attacking women on okay. one particular level, and we're talking about white women in particular. Any white woman that doesn't um, stay strictly with what's perceived to be her own race is enemy number one right now on our planet. And John Lash has helped with that. And I have to say that why I will not listen to his podcast. I listened to John Lash and Red Eyes Creation beat up on the mixed race humans three years ago in their uh -huh. white genocide episode. And I listened for any key uh -huh. words for John Lash to talk about millions of dead Afghanis. Some of these people sure. changed consciousness around 2012. Yeah. They, they've taken conspiracy theories and they've gone uber dark with it. And they inverted it on its well, head. Well, what is your interpretation of what's going on? Because I'm sure millions of women are in terror right now for their babies and considering course. abortion, which might only feed the Archon system more. And I see like women oh, yeah. in the spiritual communities here in America that talk about Archons that won't touch this with yeah. a 10 foot pole. I've seen some of them get behind the meme that, you know, people <laughs> should stick with. And so yeah. what's going on, Robert? Is this like a, a not a very good sign? <laughs> Um, well, here's the thing about an illness is it usually like a fever has to go to a, a very high level before it breaks. And I do think we're going to get to a very dark, a much darker place before this thing actually collapses. And th that's not a bad thing. Okay. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are going to get hurt. And it's going to seem traumatic, etc. But it's the only way to get beyond the illness. As far as I can tell, you, know, you mentioned George Soros. Um, he went to the London School of Economics. One of his classmates is a guy named Zachariah Sitchin, who's deceased now. Mm -hmm. um, they, yeah. So Sitchin's work is pro Inky, right? If you've read it, you know. I've, um, I something has and, has led me to stay away from it for some reason, along with other okay. authors and speakers. Well, so I'm reason. curious why. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's because it's all PR for Inky. And the, the reason I mention these guys is because both of them, having graduated from the London School of Economics, are beholden to the Rothschild dynasty, which is an extension of Enki's empire in modern times. And this is why they do social engineering. They feel it's their divine right. This is their world. This is their empire. They can do whatever they want. We're just subjects of the empire. So, But uh, the thing is that they convince us to do these things under false pretenses, it's really obvious that they know how to manipulate us expertly. So you could say it's mind control, or it's a spell, or you've been enchanted, uh, whatever you want to call it, but it's it's all the same thing. Sorcery, sophistry. Um, but if Inky wants to create a disturbance on the planet, he can use his propaganda to, and, and right, to say like, Okay, so let's start mixing these types of humans, white and African-American, to upset those other aspects of the viewing audience. You know, it's like if someone's going to be attracted to someone, just let it happen naturally. Why engage in, in propaganda to try to divide everybody? And then when the men go MGTOW or single, then they're all upset, willing to vote for Donald Trump in more wars because they haven't been late in five years. <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, just using that as an example, because I see if they can destabilize male-female relationships and, and, and kind of create this, of course, you know, of course. box, then, they they yeah. Broke up. Yes, it's all about destabilizing the nuclear family, which they did, uh, and there is no sovereignty anywhere for anyone, even the people of the so-called old world order, or whatever this new thing they're trying to do, it's all the same thing. They, they constantly change the names. The, from a Middle Eastern perspective, or specifically Islamic, these entities are called the jinn. And, and everybody is born with at least one of them assigned to them. So it's not like anybody's immune to this. It's, it would be really extraordinary. And even if somebody is somehow free of them, uh, as you were just talking about, um, they're going to that person is then going to be targeted by other humans who are not free or who are, are infected possessed whatever uh, puppets of these entities so it's a it's a really big issue um, and you know I here's the thing though I know a lot of more people have are aware of this now than ever because I only first started talking about it in late 2011 I wrote my first article 
Um, and it, I got to discuss it on uh, Coast to Coast. And it reached a lot of people. But then, of course, they were distracted and it sort of faded out. So since that time, I've off and on, you know, I've had a chance to discuss this more with people. And, of course, my thinking or awareness has, has changed somewhat um, uh, about it. So, And, you know, I, it's not like I don't want to talk about it. I just don't want to say the same thing over and over again <laughs> too often because it seems a little redundant. And um, I, I do want to help people, though. That's why... I'm foolish enough to answer all my email, unlike some people in the media, alternative media. Um, nonetheless, we don't. I, mean, I, I get this from some people write to me and like, well, I tried to get uh, in contact with this person, but they never responded. Well, OK, they're too busy or what? I don't know. I want to me, comment a little like, on that. Um, so you mentioned you do a little bit less interviews. I stopped doing regular interviews <laughs> several years ago. You're the first person that I've contacted in several months oh, to years. Thanks. And I decided several months ago, okay. you were the person that I was going to have on and that the other people that I've mentioned, there, I yeah. enjoy some of the young up and coming YouTubers that are just starting out. But as far as the speakers, sure. I, I've tuned most of oh. them out. I, I enjoy having David Icke on uh, like 12 years ago. And that was a sign that I was on yeah. the right path that he even talked to me. Plus I went down and physically yeah. met Alex Jones and, and others the, my, I was obviously destined to get close to some of these guys and then get away from them and realize that we're not meant to be one big happy family that's too collectivist. We're, we're individual. Um, I almost see us as, as like fractions of a soul that have like almost broken, fractured, and returned down to earth to do the great work. And we each have like this amazing puzzle piece, but we're not meant to be in a cult. Some of the people that almost have soul cult thinking and they see us as a truth movement that should get together with, you know, and think the same. And, and really, I don't think that's the role at all. We may meet once in a while. Oh. Now, Psychic Attack, yeah. it, it was in 2009 that I was doing a daily show on Oracle. And what I believe happened, being the only person that talks about our concert, Psychic Attack, from that group of activists. Most of them are still in Five Sense Reality, Soros, Trump, Hillary. And they don't deal with beyond yeah. five cents. I was getting hit yeah. hard. Uh, Josh Rees was getting hit hard. And he was saying horrible things about me while he was doing his show. And I'm stepping back going, something is attacking us young men on this network. Because of, you know, and mm -hmm. we have this name, Oracle Broadcasting. I'm thinking, oh, the Archons probably think that's some arrogant, arrogant stuff. <laughs> you guys think your Oracles? Yeah. Feel this. And so um, yeah. I, I stepped back from it, and then I talked about earlier why I believe the solar cycle amped up some of the interference. Um, I wanted to point out that we're in a minimum now till 2020. And so my hypothesis oh, okay. is that for the next three years, on average for the solar cycle, we will be dealing with less Archon psychic attacks until 2020 huh. due to the nature of how we interact with the electromagnetic spectrum. Once there's more natural right. electromagnetic energy for the Archons to feed on, I don't want to jump too fast in the interview. I did want to continue going. It seems like they have a plan for a global world war that they will control. Yeah. And so yeah. it seems like the first phase is to get us all fighting, right? Divide and end the friendships that were started a decade ago. Um, I have, uh, I don't try to talk about her too much, but I have a psychic webmaster. And unlike previous women that I had an interest with, um, she can actually hear the voices come at her saying, Alex is no good. You need to stop helping this guy. So she is wow. regularly targeted as, as well as recently. And the voices were saying, stop talking to Alex. Just focus on your own stuff. And huh. earlier I was getting reports back from some women that I had met that they were getting dreams that I was married or, or dreams that I was uh, with another woman. And then it became very clear to me that I was marked to have no deep connection with the female in this lifetime as long as I'm exposing them. If they're able to control the sure. biology of a female, her on-off, turn-off switch will be marked to off in some pretty profound, aggressive ways, along with subliminals that they could be spiritually attacked. And so I'm not afraid to talk about this anymore because now it's been going on for six or seven years. And I've given up trying to connect with the average human female with average consciousness. Uh, unless shown otherwise, she has an override factor. So having this, this friend that's been a webmaster is able to differentiate her own thoughts 
versus someone else's thoughts, um, it, it's, it's really rewarding for me. I feel less of a victim and more, oh, wow, just like my friend Leon said, who, just, who did the clearing on me, saying that there was cybernetic beam psychic attack energy towards the small survival business in Portland before I left in 11. He said, it, it's not that you're doing something bad, like the New Agers say, like you're a karma or whatever. You're doing something that's literally pissing off the people that run this region that you're in there in Portland. Yeah. They don't want you there anymore to do whatever it is that you've been doing for 10 years. And so some right. could say I let them win. I, I, I just left to feel my own freedom from them. And now I'm reaching more people around the world. So the reason I bring this up is, I mean, so many people as we lead into this potential conflict seem to be led by the voices in the head. And as, as conspiratorial as some people get with the Iraqi weapons that the military is using, the voices in the yeah, head by the Pentagon, God. they're not really the thinking. Voice of God, yeah. It's, right. an, it's an old technology. It was, yeah, they, they, they took it. They appropriated it from the inventor, uh, Flanagan, Patrick Flanagan, back in the 60s, I think it was. Uh, anyway, I could be a little off on that. But, yeah, that was one of the technologies that the Government Security Act, they, they took it over. And, yeah, they, they have that stuff. Well, you're suggesting, as well as others, though, that there's a more advanced technology, though, than that that's interfering, uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah. influencing us as we get kind of start talking about maybe what's happening with the Chinese people and Russians as people talk war, war, war. Mm -hmm. It just seems like they've really influenced people to stay in these fake alternative truth boxes. Now they've really poured on yeah. the gasoline the last three years for the fear of a white genocide and a Islamic invasion of the United States. And as I wrap up my thoughts here and turn it back yeah. to you, my interpretation is this. The Archons are playing a cry wolf scenario because you can't tell women yeah. to be afraid of rape 24 times out of the day or the woman will just tune out. So what they've done the last couple of years, despite what's happening in Europe and some of the stuff is serious, but they've engineered that. To turn around though yeah. and flip things on its head like in America, I know that women do not want to be told, be afraid of rape women every day because that's so fear-based, it disgusts them. What they're doing now seems to be by design to turn off their instincts for what could be coming in 10 years. Because at least you're not, you're not projecting that we're all going to be saved by some galactic space wave X. And it seems that most of the Archon disinformation people online are saying that. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've, I... Uh... I monitor the internet. I, I okay. don't agree with most of it, okay? It's actually quite silly. Uh, or it's just an extension of the Archons, as you're saying. But um, the only savior that's coming is Enki. He's coming back. And it isn't going to be a good thing. Of course, it will be billed as something wonderful with the, the, the approval of the, the Vatican and the UN and begrudgingly the Pentagon. And, um, you know, it'll come at a time of crisis. He'll come to save us once again. And uh, a lot of people are going to buy it. I, again, they'll just fall for it, hook, line, and sinker, and that includes the alternative media. But uh, uh, being afraid is one is one of the, the key things that they want from us. They want us to be afraid of everything, including each other, and that's a key part of it. You know, that's how they control us and keep us from uniting with each other against them. So, you know, they, they are scared of us. I told you, this is one of the reasons they have to remain covert all the time is because they know that if we figure it out, and more, and this is the thing, people are, increasingly, people are figuring this out. It's a, And it has, ever since 2012. I, as I said, I started 2011 talking about them and exposing them, even in photographs and stuff, and it's like, this, this message is getting, not just me, but it's like, I know the message is getting out there, and people are waking up, and... Um, this is why the Archons are acting increasingly desperate, um, because they know that people are figuring out that they do exist, and um, they don't want to feed them anymore, and they don't want to be controlled, or it's more like this. They, As I said, they're really good at tricking us. They know exactly how we're thinking and feeling, so it's really, really, really easy for them uh, to say things to us or have things happen in a way that, Basically, it's like herding sheep. Right. Well, let me ask you some specific questions about what you think is on the horizon yeah. then on the way to um, transhumanism. 
So here we are, I guess, I see this as in between ages, like we're coming out of the age of analog. Yeah. We're already in AI in yeah. the sense that, in case you didn't know, yeah. some of us shouldn't talk yeah. about potential wars anymore on YouTube or our channel at this point is going to get shut down because of what's happening. Um, uh, wait, right. wait, you just said, okay, my website was shut off recently and it, what it says is forbidden, you're forbidden, you're forbidden okay. to enter this site. So, you're right. Uh, yeah, it happened today to me, and and I, I immediately started complaining, and okay. then they just switched it back over to. But it was a way. It's it was their way of saying, um, you know, we're watching you. Don't think that you're going to slip under the radar. We could just flip you. We could just flip you off. Uh, switch you off. Well, on that flip, note, flip my my computer is done. my computer is doing that more often too, which is why I'm looking at a backup. <laughs> um, I earned some money running the new section at amtvmedia.com for Christopher Green. And so that, that helps me pay for the bills and whatnot. He is now prohibited from uploading to YouTube. Oh, wow. And, and so um, so what I want to get at is, uh, so I agree with you, and I think that we're on the same page that they want us afraid of these things. And we're yeah. in this energy stepping stone, getting more articulate with that after 2012 leading into 2025. Now, do you see something specific coming? I'm going to bring in a couple things at once, try to summarize it. Around the 2020s, going from this 87, yeah. 2012, 2025. Now, 10 years yeah. ago, I came to the belief, and I could be wrong, let's hope I am, that that'll be the time in which they plan to have this occupation of the U.S. Potentially a stage thing, something to for the archons to feed off of. That fear that Americans right. could be in if our current president or whoever's coming in in 2020 let's say trump leaves and hands yeah. over basically the stage is being set for there to be an east versus west scenario and a lot of researchers that are like really deep into a warning about world war three they're having a very difficult time right with the idea that enki or someone or something is manufacturing the conflict that there is no real a good guy when I look at Putin, I see an alien, yeah. okay? When I look at Trump, sure. I see an archon. When I look at Z, I yeah. see literally a T-Rex reptilian. This is not a typical way to look at the world. This is considered crazy. I'm struggling, though, because I truly believe that I, I believe I've glimpsed into this 2025 reality. And it's not like a spaceship, the Palladians coming to save us. <laughs> well, but I'm hearing... I'll stop saying names. I'm hearing other people say this, though, to their flock. Yeah. Friends of ours will say. Of Friends of ours are telling people we're saved by 2025, and we're going up in the uh -huh. spacecraft. And I'm like, okay, well, this is then more archonic influence over the alt media. So last point, yeah. they're promoting going to Mars, which you're also all about discussing before it was cool. They're basically uh, telling yeah, the young was... people that they're going to go off planet during war in the future, I speculate. They're not yet oh, saying whatever. that that's the plan, but that seems to be the agenda to create an off-world colony yeah. using humans that are so freaked out <laughs> and, and afraid <laughs> that they'll go any... They might not even go to Mars. They might just go over to some... And I'll throw that back in your corner because I think now yeah. we're reaching this critical mass where people don't trust NASA, they don't trust the space program, and they're going, "Who is Elon Musk? You know, why does he really say right. he wants a tunnel under New uh, Los Angeles?" Yeah, as if there wasn't already. So yeah, the, <clears throat> the problem is that uh, false pretenses. Everything is packaged in a certain way in order to promote a response, and. Um, you know, David Icke talks a lot about that, and it's it's really older than what Icke is talking about the Hegelian doctrine, left, right, center, problem, reaction, solution. It's 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 how they operate. Uh, as I said, they're herding the sheep into a certain direction. So recently, Trump or allegedly Trump administration has said we need to go to Mars. Now, why? I don't know. That they didn't say, but I, I suspect it's part of this this thing. It's, it could just be preparation, you know. But the other president that said that was um, H.W. Bush. And we didn't go. At least, as far as we know, we didn't go. But if you look at uh, the article, it's a multi-page article that I wrote called um, Digital Deception in the Pacific. It's all about Google. 
using Google Maps, how they can make shit disappear, or they can make stuff. I think they can make stuff appear. I mean, it's all digital. Why not? They're, <laughs> they're you know, it's like the Mandela effect of maps. They can just do things, but there are things on the Google Earth maps of the moon and Mars that are just mind-boggling. People aren't talking about it. Um, Google is um, was started by the Pentagon, and if you look at any one of their maps, it'll show you that where they get the source data from, which satellite, which agency. I mean, Google doesn't have their own satellites. They just get the they get the imagery or the information and they put it on their in their map or maps of Earth, Moon, and Mars. So the problem was I was looking at things that looked like anomalies under the water uh, last year. Yeah, it was, it was about this time last year. I was looking at something. I'd been looking at it for a while, thinking, Jesus, this looks like a building or a couple buildings under the water near the equator, really big ones. And as I was looking at it one day, they just vanished. I came back, you know, I was doing this. I was doing screen captures and studying it in Photoshop. I come back, it's gone. And I was like, wait a second, how in the hell did that happen? Did you, you know, it couldn't be, that couldn't have really happened. So that's, you know, that and also the so-called uh, UFO base off of Malibu. That's the opposite. That's where they, I believe they actually... Um, photoshopped it so that it looked like something that it's not and then they promoted it through um, uh, a local talk show host some of his buddies they put that out there and it polluted the internet now I mean god most people in the alt media they, they really think there is a, a massive underground underwater entrance just off the coast of the military base there at Point Magoo well Malibu. on that topic and, I, and I'll try to be brief with this um, there, there's a, been a, a fake news explosion take off in the last two years, and yes. even though I do have a passion for discussing geopolitics, the outrageous disinfo about Russia, China invading the U.S. ahead of time or ten years ago allegedly yeah. at the Mexico border, I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> this stuff isn't there by accident. They're try yeah. if I'm correct and not incorrect. If they are planning this in the future, it would make sense for them to pollute. The internet with this information, calling it early, doing the whole cry wolf thing, getting women to be afraid yeah. early in advance thing. So when it does happen, no one will look. No one will be aware. They'll just say at that point, you know what? Don't talk to me anymore. I don't want to hear about this crap. <laughs> and so right now they're getting people right. to be angry at the conspiracy folks. And one last point. Every now and then they go after the people that are interested in higher consciousness and alien theories. They'll do hit pieces right. on them too. And try to make them to be violent by writing up a story about a serial killer who believed that he was out to kill the reptilians. And about every year they have a story the Daily Mail will release. Yeah. Well, it's again, this is part of social engineering, mind control, psychological warfare, uh, you name it. But it's, it's a way of keeping everybody in line and um, also preventing us from seeing what's real. And actually doing something about it. It just seems yes, like maybe they problem. want to get off the planet for another reason that we don't know about. Maybe it is solar related. What if the dark grid could uh, come down from the solar flares to go really out there? And in that case, yeah, they wouldn't be able to control telepathically the same amount of humans. So they would maybe like to have their off-world base where they can have new humans which aren't grounded yeah. to the earth because they're off world. They're off the earth. Right. And so maybe That's they want to right, combine with whatever they're doing right now that we don't know about. The way I see it is that they have put together a contingent of so-called super soldiers with advanced AI technology, space transport, and they will be using that at some date in the future to uh, continue their military campaign not in this solar system, but within this galaxy. And it's part of an ongoing affair that Enki initiated against his family. <laughs> Relatively long time ago, okay? I mean, by Earth standards, it's a long time ago. Seems almost absurd, but our lifetimes have been um, artificially shortened. And our memories have, are wiped every time, pretty much mm. we're blocked every time we, we reincarnate here. And t that's intentional. That's again, so we can't be too intelligent. 
mm -hmm. and uh, well informed. I mean, it's across the board. I'm, I'm saying multi on multiple dimensions, we are being blocked and lied to and manipulated. But there is some good things going on, and and obviously the archons know that. That's what's freaking them out. Like you said, they need some sort of backup, like a bug out place in case everything falls apart on them. Uh, and I think it is. I actually I actually feel like they knew all along that this that their system was unsustainable. It's very unstable to be in with. Um, house of cards, basically. And um, it doesn't take much to, to knock it down. So, again, that's one of the reasons they want us to, under their control. They need to maintain control of us or anybody who's part of their empire. It isn't working out too great for them. And um, this is this was what I was talking about. These When I asked telepathically what I felt was divine beings how are you going to resolve this problem what can you do because it just seemed insurmountable to me okay I'd already reached some level of clarity on this but now my next question is like well holy shit how do you fix it how do you heal the collective consciousness and that's when I was mentally shown images of these waves sweeping over the planet and yeah it is happening scientists are, are admitting this is going on they don't know where the waves are coming from they're concerned about it. Obviously, they, they know it's increasing the amount of volcanic activity and earthquakes, etc. But um, it's also shifting our consciousness. The thing is, people that are choosing to become awake and aware and more um, living in harmony with themselves and the environment and each other, that's, a, that's amplifying. They're being amplified to do that. People who are freely choosing to be part of the Archon Agenda are being driven deeper into that. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it it scares them. They they really don't. Anything that isn't that, they just they can't see beyond it. Okay, so their paranoia, fear, parasitic, predatory behavior is being amplified as well. That's really all it is. I mean, you know, amplifier just amplifies. Okay, it's it's either some really cool sounds or it's going to sound like crap. It's like I mean, if we're talking music, right? An amplifier just makes it louder. <laughs> It, okay, it doesn't make the music any better or worse. It just that's what happens. So mm -hmm. it's kind of I know it's a terrible analogy, but that's what that's what I see going on here. That's like the sun is like an amplifier of all that's there. So it's not like we're blaming it. It's just bringing all to the surface, no. and it could be bringing our psychic yeah. awareness to. So let me ask you this: the threat of AI and a robot takeover of humanity being neutralized by a solar wave. Oh, yeah, I know Corey Good talked about that and some others. Um, oh, I'll have to I, check I that out. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, again, it's speculation. It sounds interesting. It would be wonderful if that is the case. Uh, I, but, however, if it shut down all technology, then we've got a whole other level of crisis on our hands, and which triggers a continuity of government, at least in the United States. They're going to pull out all kinds of weird stuff. Um it's, it's a real conundrum, man. I feel, you know, in a way, I feel like this is a hostage situation at a mental institution. It's, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe the question isn't how do we defeat them, because I always come back to this. It's what got us here in the Matrix yes. to begin with, which really we could do on another show where we can explore Gnostic okay. teachings and spiritual stuff about <laughs> but We could touch upon it, but, I mean, that kind of naturally leads us to the next area, which we haven't touched upon. And that's the death trap. That's the soul matrix. That's the uh -huh. idea that we could be trapped over. I think I'm trapped. I believe that I'm starting to remember past lives. I believe now that I yeah. may be here from a past sin in Atlantis because of what I was told from people that have seen past lives that I played a role in this destabilization. I think many did. And they may have broke out Not into a sure. hundred pieces and they may have to work 10 lifetimes to get out of here. And I'm convinced this has got to be the last one for me. Now, will there be an energy wave? Because yeah. I listened to your Higher Chats interview <laughs> twice to make yeah. sure I was up to date with your current awareness of, okay, so we have a grid okay. maybe holding us in as souls. Will that grid be released during maybe some of these waves? So it seems that... It, it, it could. Yeah. It seems that that's why we want it to could, stay away from really the race could. war stuff because if we succumb to their agenda yeah. and we start saying, let's, let's bomb this country... It seems like they're in a campaign to mark those souls to keep them here. That's that's all I've got on that. Yeah, desperately so. And the thing about it is that comes from, uh, he's a friend of mine now. I, I only recently started re reading his work in 2014, but we've become pretty close. And uh, So that's Wes Penray, 
and uh, it's spelled W-E-S Penre, P-E-N-R-E. I think he's Swedish originally, Danish. Anyway, bottom line is uh, his work is fascinating and it was very, it was very helpful to me. And he, he actually wrote a recently about the uh, avoiding the death trap. He, and it's there's links on my website, but his his website was recently shut down uh, allegedly for a delay of payment for his domain name registration or something. Anyway, it should be back. He's he's also working on that. Um, if anybody goes to try and find westpenray.com or or Unicus Magazine, if you go to my library section, there's links there. Uh, but anyway, he, he's, he's claiming that the, the grid, the soul trap that was put around this world has been perforated by souls that have woken up and demanded as sovereign souls that they need, that they have every right to leave. They, and, and that is true. Once a person realizes that they're sovereign, they make that declaration. They can't be held here. Most people aren't, aren't at that level yet because they've been here too long. A lot of us that came here, unfortunately, got trapped too. And it was a real problem. We thought we could just come down here and f help fix things. And ultimately, we didn't realize how difficult that was going to be. Because, you know, think about it. If you, like I said about a, a mental institution, if if you said, well, I'm going to go in there and help those people without realizing that you could become infected too, mentally ill as well, uh, that could be a problem, right? You could end up going in there and not coming out. So that's kind of what I see is going on here. And um, is it changing? Yeah, there's supposedly there's now quite a few holes in this in this thing. It's more like a grid now instead of just a, a, a massive uh, shield or bubble around the earth. But I mean, scientists actually found this recently. I mean, Wes had written about it and I go, well, dude, I mean, I think this is what the scientists are talking about. Because they didn't know what they all they said was, "Hey, this is not the Van Allen radiation belts. We don't know what this is. It looks like something out of Star Trek. We don't know what it's. <laughs> we don't know why it's there, what it's doing, but we see it, you know. And so naturally, I sent that to Wes, and we share a lot of very interesting stuff. Uh, again, most of what we're talking about, we can't really prove it, but you know, you have to." We have to have some analysis and draw some conclusions. Of course, they can always be revised later, but I mean, it's just, it's just the nature of it is. I, I feel like there's so much information and artifacts that's being withheld from us. Right. Obviously, it's intentional, cause, right? So it, it makes it difficult to deal with these topics. Right. We talked about Iraq. Um, so the missing... Uh, I want to segue from that also to Stargate the series. So with Iraq, we saw the missing artifacts of 2003. What do you think was right. behind that? And how do we connect in maybe predictive programming, Stargate with all of that, and what you said earlier about Inky want, maybe wanting his own technology to travel to different worlds? Well, Stargate has some very charismatic um, actors. I like Richard Dean Anderson, and there's Amanda Tapping. It's a really kid-friendly show. I mean, it's really I, – I, I bought the whole series – for like a few bucks at the thrift store over the winter, and I felt that I was meant to buy that, right, kind of digest it, be entertained by it as we were snowed in for three months, but also go, oh, that's what they want us to think is cool. Oh, and then they really brought out in the Stargate episode the Greys working with the human government or other alien factions. Yeah, well, Hollywood is not a benign capital of entertainment. Right. It is something that Enki instituted. Um, so if, have you happened to see the new Fox show called Lucifer? Um, I haven't, but there's a new Fox show called People of Earth or something that's about Earth living after an apocalypse. And they're basically living yeah. alongside alien technology. So I haven't heard of that um, one. No. Oh, I heard that it was okay. coming out, though. Yeah. No, it's it's been out. It's 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 in its okay. second season. I think they're actually finishing up the second season. The bottom line is this: I was contacted by a Yasidi gentleman who told me he is a, was born and he is a Luciferian and he's part of a group that worships Lucifer, Yaldabaoth, whatever, right? It's it's common in certain parts of the Middle East. They people they don't advertise. Hey, I worship Lucifer, um, but again, you know that's. It was very, very common up until the time of the Crusades, etc. Anyway, he contacts me and said, look, we feel very insulted by what you're saying about Enki, Lucifer. <laughs> okay, look, I'm not trying to insult anybody. 
If it's true, it's true, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to make shit up just to make him look bad. If it's true, that would explain some things. That's why we're discussing it. And then he says to me, well, um, uh, he's got his own show coming out. I'm like, well, what do you mean? And he's, so he tells me about this. It's not a, it's a sitcom, right, where Lucifer leaves hell and goes to Los Angeles, right in the heart of Hollywood, opens up a nightclub called Lux, and all the machinations that go on from there. I won't, ex but I found it curious because here I've been talking about this, and in 2000, and, yeah, I think it was 16, 2016, just last year is when I, I, th I think it was that. Anyway, recently, okay, recently, I was saying how I met, I had met Lucifer in Malibu. <laughs> there. Sure enough, some jerk in Hollywood ends up, you know, rewriting some, you know, thing. It's so that Lucifer is now living in Hollywood, but he's he has a liaison with um, a female detective who lives in Malibu. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, you guys, you can't even have a, it's like, you have zero freaking originality, and you're listening to all these shows and reading all our websites and trying to twist it into your own version of, you know, what people, see, because here's the problem, the human subcon so-called subconscious doesn't know the difference between entertainment and information. So a lot of that stuff, um, we just we just absorb it. It gets ingrained into a part of our psyche, which is another word for mind. But the mind is not just the brain, it's the soul. So look, those patterns that they're projecting it, literally into us mm -hmm. become part of us. Okay, unless we completely go, switch it off and go, bullshit, I know who's doing this, I know what you're trying to say to me, I totally reject that, it's wrong. Uh, which most people don't do. They just go, oh, well, that's entertainment. You know, that's Hollywood for you. But they don't understand. It's They're casting a spell. It's sophistry. And, and that word actually is based on the word Sophia or Sophia, right? The goddess, who, allegedly, who the Gnostics blame for creating the Archons. Well, that's... <laughs> That's a weird way of saying it. It's like saying Eve is to blame for all of humanity's uh, evil, right? When in fact it was Lucifer or Anki, this one. Well, th that's yeah. actually a good... There's there's the Gospel of St. Thomas, and there's the 113 verses. Uh -huh. And there's the and I did a yeah. reading of that for the first time over the winter on YouTube. And I just felt the release by echoing that. And then I made a note about yeah. verse 114. And I haven't yet delved into that conspiracy, but it basically says that you know women don't have a regular soul as men or something like that. Um, oh, it God. actually stood out to me that that was planted by someone later. And so I'm going to look into that. But when you yeah. look at rock music, yeah. I think it was Led Zeppelin. <laughs> And the intro of a song, uh, either Stairway to Heaven or some other one, was something about a woman having a half soul and having to rise up through hell. And I didn't even notice that was in the uh, lyrics till a guy in the car was start, was singing along with it. Um, uh -huh. I'm, I'm sending you a link in real time over Skype, and you can just look at the visual. When yeah. you described feeling offended by the Satanists with the bumper stickers... Uh, and you were describing this, I believe, to Alfred in that sense. That's exactly, yeah, yeah, that it's like weird. you and I are having parallel experiences. But here I am in Portland seeing a woman with a pentagram tattoo. And see, yeah. during that time in 2014 when I returned with nothing but a backpack, that last year in Portland, I talked at greater length about the satanic arconic um, infection that specifically was targeting our city, not just the planet. But Portland being one of one of the the crown jewels, and there's a number of reasons why I believe that. But it's it must have to do with ancient Lumeria and Earth energies that they want to capture. So there are a Probably. lot of beautiful women that are moving to Portland that are becoming Satanists and getting involved in prostitution. Wow. Um, the sex industry wow. is huge there. Pornography is huge there. Wow. Relationships are horrible yeah. there. So as a young man like myself who's trying to emit some light. The attacks were incredible. The alienation was incredible. The reason we need to bring it up is because other men are contacting me and women, but they're sure. having the same thing happen yep. to them in Portland. And they see me as a pioneer, one of the first to discuss the city being hit by high tech alien spiritual warfare to a point where there's going to be an exodus from Portland in the next 10 years, because that seems to be a singularity capital that they've planned. 
if what you're saying is true, along with cyborgs, Portland is going to be the new Silicon Valley. And so that's why you have the cuddle houses coming there where you have to pay to cuddle and like other forms of, of breakups of the family. So I think yeah. like my role right now is less political and, and, and yours as well. We're like, we're like beyond the political yeah. left, right box. It's like, we're actually yeah. trying to help yeah. souls that don't know that they're trapped in the energy harvesting centers and the energy harvesting centers, you know, have the cell phone towers and they have the uh, the smart yeah. meters and these may all be yeah. conduits for archons so i think what people don't oh, yeah. understand about the off-grid way of life doesn't mean that we get away from the archons i just demonstrated that you can't necessarily get a, but no. you can get away from the power grid when i was in portland yeah. i was having dreams about entities using the power grid as a transport yeah. conduit they do Okay. With uh, Dr. John Lilly, Spence also known, said the mad scientist in Malibu um, for a while there, heavily into ketamine and the isolation tanks. Uh, but he was also working for the military. He did some crazy stuff. Math has been around for a while. The Germans, that was one of the things that the Archons um, <laughs> gifted them. Hey, here's a great idea. Take this, you know, make you stronger, smarter, stay up longer, and you know, make it easier for us to control you. But you know, that's a good thing. Um, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, what was I saying? Oh, uh, you know, you said something about the pornography. That that was just one level. Now, with all the, the internet pornography, uh, was just preparation for the next level, which is the um, cyber sex uh, with uh, uh, androids. That's that's real. That's happening. I mean, we're not just talking sex dolls now. They, they have to have a personality. They have to have a voice box. They got to do, you know, let's, hey, Let's network them. Uh, it'll be like... <laughs> okay, so the since the 1940s, nuclear radiation has been released. Toxic nuclear radiant energy has been released, and it dominates this the entire environment. Um, and, I mean, it started at Los Alamos. I mean, sorry, White Sands, July 16th. And I think that coincides with them landing on the the capital on July 16, 2002. So I think the first bomb was ignited in 42. Anyway, it, it, it seems to have some sort of cor correlation there, but the reason that they have released so much toxic radiant energy on this planet is because they knew that the, the divine beings, on the flip side of the coin here, they knew that the divine beings were directing uh, benevolent energy to us. A, a different kind of radiant energy, a radiation that is actually positive, just like sunlight is actually radiation, okay? But <laughs> without it, we die. So it's that kind of, those different competing types of frequencies are what's going on on this planet and obviously affecting our consciousness and our state of being. So um, I, hope, I hope that made that clear. Because there's no way that you need... They did not need to blow up that many nuclear weapons, so-called testing, below the ground, above the ground, even in outer space, just in the upper atmosphere. All, that's ridiculous. They, they obviously had an, a, a direct purpose or an intent behind it. Most people have no idea what that would be other than, well, it's just part of the military. It's for our national defense. So... So you're basically hypothesizing that, along with others, that the future as it stands is cybernetic. Um, but beyond that, you That's see maybe something changing on the Earth. Well, of course. Of course I do. Um, and I could be wrong, but the way it was shown to me was that a lot of people were going to wake up at pretty much around the same time. And I, I actually see that happening. I mean, recently we were hit with two huge waves that washed over the planet from two different directions. Scientists were very concerned about it. They don't know where these waves are coming from or, or what it's going to portend for the future. But it seems to be increasing. That level of activity is not hypothetical. It's real. Uh, uh, now, like I said, though, the, the archons, the dark side of the, of the equation here, is freaking out. They know that it's at some point uh, this these extra waves of energy 
are going to trigger people to literally become fully aware, whether they like it or not. Everybody's going to be awoken from their uh, current state of, of stupor. You know, the spell, in other words, the spell will be broken, okay? And at that point, everybody will have, with a clear conscience will be able to choose whether or not they want to continue serving the Archon agenda or do they want to live free and healthy the way they were originally created and intended to do so. Uh, and that's only fair that they have that ability, you know, but they can't make that choice. I mean, right now, we're not even being given that choice. But I do think that rather than just wiping, like like what happened with Atlantis, Enki said he was going to do one thing, and he obviously didn't follow through with it. So they just they wiped out this the planet, and uh, everything pretty much everything was on it was gone. And then Enki reconstituted the whole thing. He rebuilt the whole stupid thing over again, and now we're back at this this stage. So I I think that is one of the cont contingency plans that his parents. Are are proposing for us? Maybe it's some sort of a depopulation chance. agenda. Maybe using the world war to depopulate to repeat this kind of cycle that you're just alluding well, to. The, the Georgia Guidestones talking about reducing the population. That is a very desperate attempt on the part of the Luciferians to knock. Uh, they don't. Okay, if they were to do that theoretically, then those souls would be in a state of limbo, subject to the whims of the Archons, whether they, you know, they so they would sort of like be hold, holding them in reserve. The re only reason they would do that is so that they would hopefully uh, be able to retain control of them and, and then um, uh, direct them to reincarnate at a time when the waves of energy have gone and they would all be uh, still under the influence of the Luciferian agenda. They wouldn't. They wouldn't even question it. I mean, so it's it's a really desperate thing, and I don't think it would. It's it's such a huge violation that um, uh, I'm pretty sure that there are um, extenuating circumstances that the, the, his parents just aren't. They're not going to permit him them to to do that to us at this time. I mean, I'm hoping that's the case. But they could have a conflict to, without having nuclear warfare and having a mass death toll. Of course. At, like, so ju just to of create course, the, the, right, the pain, the chaos, the fear for them to feed off of to just kind of stay here. But they could still leave five billion. They're doing that all the time. Right. They're doing that all the time. What I'm saying is the only reason they would kill off that many people is not to save the planet. It's to make sure that we didn't leave as those those waves of energy wash over, if, if all those people were still on the planet in physicality, then they, they would have an opportunity to suddenly see things for what they are. In other words, their connectivity would go way up suddenly. Hmm. All the, the, the crap, all the archontic technology and, and stuff would just be overridden, and they would suddenly see, see everything. Whether they liked it or not, they would just know what's real and what isn't. And at that point, they could make a well-informed decision and exercise their free will with the full knowledge of what is going on as opposed to being lied to every day and making decisions based on some, some essentially, lies. Okay. So, so that's may the difference. Maybe that's, that's the why difference. they want people in certain areas on the planet that are going to end up being sure. target cities. Like Portland, I just mentioned all that about making... But I didn't get into all the real estate stuff, but you can learn about that, how they made it very popular to move to. Well, now, what's yeah. what's on the table with regards to news? The North Korean manufactured threat. And where yeah. where are their targets? Oh, my God. It is Portland. It is Seattle. It is L.A. Yeah. It's these places where people have been mind-screwed to go and want to live. Now, what what's yeah. your interpretation yeah. of the post-2012 energy cycles um do you also see something significant about 2025 it's actually like 2020 that things are really going to start yeah it was it, it, i no that's what when i asked them when is this gonna when are things really going to hit the fan that's when the next solar cycle returning. kicks off is 2020 we're in the three years yeah, yeah. i know no, okay that's what i yeah okay and i don't i don't publicize this because i just don't know but that's part of what i felt like was an exchange telepathically you know here's the thing mm -hmm. telepathy is not a mysterious superpower 
any more than empathy. Telepathy and empathy are just the forms of communication, very strong, distinct, healthy forms of communication that one soul to another or a group of souls to another through the web of light. That's the way it was described to me, and that's the way so far it's been working for me. Problem is, like, Inky's aware of that, too. And this is why they do all, all this other crazy stuff, literally crazy stuff, to to keep us disconnected from the the web of light. I mean, even this Internet stuff, it's a, it's a bastardization of what really already exists on a much higher level. At much much higher capacity for, for communication and commerce and all kinds of stuff. It already exists. It's phenomenal, okay? Uh, but we're not given access to that. I think people are starting to really get at why there may be chemtrailing to block out the rays of the sun. If the sun energy yeah. is here to not give us cancer and you know not cause us problems, but in fact to help us awaken to who we really are as souls, then it absolutely makes right. crystal clear sense why they would want to create a fear of a war or a conflict and send men and women against men and women when we should be maybe sitting down with our feet in the grass and the dirt, um, drinking healthy water, maybe even going days without food, fasting, being maybe in a deep state of prayer or something like that yep. seems really strong to me, Robert, and others that war is yep. the opposite of what we want to be focused on. <laughs> and instead, we want to be over here with our consciousness getting ready to maybe not start flying up into the spacecrafts like the New Agers told us, but um, with our consciousness to to evolve to where we're aware of why we're here and why these events are happening evolving, okay though. alex it's not ascension it's not evolution okay. it's reconnecting with the divine cosmos yes. that's mm -hmm. where we come from that's where we need to return to we're in this prison it's an artificial matrix and what you're talking about those are ways to connect reconnect to the cosmos it's through your, your different chakras but specifically through the pineal gland which can be Unfortunately, most of us don't have healthy pineal glands. So that's what I was trying to allude to before about connecting. Um, I didn't want to get into this too deeply, but the pineal gland is the primary way. It's like the transceiver point for us, the highest chakra, for us to make the connection from a physical to a, a non-physical level with the, with the real cosmos. So... Uh, Oh, geez. There's a lot of different ways to clear. You can actually Google this, how to activate your pineal gland. Some of it's nonsense, but, you know, again, I think use your intuition or instincts or whatever. Kind of try different things. Uh, most of us do have very unhealthy, by design, we have very unhealthy pineal glands. But like you said, if you, a simple th it sounds too simple, right? Take off your shoes, stand on the grass, uh, hug a tree, hold hands, uh, humming, toning. Things like this that that all uh, stimulates the the, the uh, pineal gland, and um, it's. But the thing is, we're just talking about returning to a natural state of health, and reconnecting to the cosmos and uh, our family, our collective family is enormous, absolutely enormous. But this is one of the reasons that they they have no problem with us uh, committing suicide or murder, um, and uh, yeah, I do think it's it. It's going to stop at some point, at least for us. People like us, we don't. We just say no. We choose no. I, I, no, absolutely not. I'm not going to participate in that. So it's it is our choice, okay? It's nobody else's choice. It's nobody else's business what we choose to do as as sovereign souls, and the archons know that. And it's one of the reasons that they, they constantly try to make us feel guilty and confused and drugging us and uh, lying to us. It's just, it's really pathetic, honestly, what they do. It's just so predictable. It's absolutely pathetic. Uh, but it's insane, too. See, that's the other thing, you know. It's, the, it's not right for me to, it's not my place to judge them. I understand them, though. I've come to an understanding of them. That's uh, this was part of my whole deal. Was I needed some clarity on this matter because I, I really couldn't figure it out for myself. And, I, and it's a good thing that I did ask for some clarity, um, and it, it didn't come right away either. And I'm still open to new information. You know, I'm not saying that my what I'm presenting here is is absolutely infallible, but this is my understanding at this point, and. Um, you know, I appreciate you letting me have this conversation with you because this is not about entertainment. We're trying to um, 
educate ourselves about a very real problem that's affecting everybody to various degrees. Well, I appreciate you uh, coming on and in conjunction with what I said earlier about YouTube, you know, I put out in a recent video, I said, I'm not going to talk about World War III anymore on this medium. I'm not comfortable with AIA transcribing my CC. Uh, so I started an yeah. on-demand channel where people are pitching in for a few dollars every month and I'm starting small, okay. but I'm going to go full, yeah. whatever I want to do over there. And then on YouTube, I made the decision, this has got to be about helping people spiritually. So having people like you on, and hopefully we can talk again, the f probably a more focused discussion next time, if you like, on the real spiritual teachings that we're not getting from today's spiritual movements. And, and also yes, anything I that totally you wanted to add in now, like what's not in the Nagamati that maybe we should be focused on? Yeah, Yeah, because here's the thing. Well, you can't solve a problem unless you know you have one. So, and I've been very focused on that. And yeah, I've, I've alluded to some possible solutions, but I do want to focus more on that going forward. If I'm going to keep doing this public speaking and writing, um, that's, that's really, I think that's where we're at. Not just me, but I think that's where we're at now. Is we can do, there's a lot of people that understand the problem. And, but, they, but now the question is, okay, so what do we do about it? How do we deal with it, right? Individually, collectively. So that's worth, that is worth talking about it at, at some, uh, in some depth.